And um, Bob? Yeah. Well, listen, we are broadcasting live from World Up uh, World Cafe upstairs. A fantastic crowd has gathered. Yes. Give yourselves a hand as we celebrate 25 years of Michaela Majun on so the many XPN old friends morning here. show. Yeah, I'd seen some fantastic faces, morning show volunteers, members, listeners, as we, we kind of look back in the archives, the on-air archives of what Michaela was doing circa 1990 on XPN. Listen to this. Listen to the one and only Michaela Majun on the XPN Morning Show. This is National Public Radio News from Washington. Rainy Wednesday morning, 40 degrees, raining lightly now, but the rain is supposed to get heavier later on. I'm Michaela Majun here with you on WXPN. We're all concerned about events in the Persian Gulf, along with hourly newscasts from National Public Radio. WXPN is making announcements about events happening in the Philadelphia area that relate to the Gulf crisis. The next community calendar is coming up around 8.15 after we hear from Kate and Anna McGarrigal and the Talking Heads. On XPN, this is from the McGarrigal's new album, Heartbeats Accelerating, on The Place for New Music, 88.5. Wow, The Place <laughs> for New Music, which yeah. is now really old music. And when XPN was... <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say back But the rest it, of us haven't aged a bit. Not at all, not at all. Oh, and my goodness. When NPR and I said News XPN wrong. And, and Carl, <laughs> Carl, of course you would notice that, right? There, yes. Carl Castle was doing NPR. and we, That's we right, and I used broadcast. to make this big deal out of him saying, oh, Carl, he's so sexy. And I finally met him at a public radio conference out in Seattle, and I said, oh, I've just been talking back to you all these years. He was really gracious. Next, the, the sex symbol, Carl Castle. Really? Yes, indeed. <laughs> wait, wait, don't tell me. That's <laughs> <laughs> so, wow, that's really great listening to all that old stuff. I still want to know who's squirreled that away. Well, we have to thank Kevin Kilborn, who was your engineer in the that's early days. Right. Maybe he was. explain how that worked because you really didn't touch any buttons back then. I no, I no, I pushed some <laughs> buttons, but I didn't touch any. Um, <clears throat> yeah, when I got to the station, I had um, somebody in the other room. We were separated by glass, um, doing the controls. So I would have to actually tell them what I wanted. We'd have to mind meld, right, Kevin? Kevin did it for a while, Tom Terry, Chris Palmer, I think they were the only three. And then I was finally forced to learn how to do it myself. And it's so much easier just to have a thought and then manipulate the controls. I don't know why I resisted. And then that became the newsroom where I would do my news broadcast. That's right, where one time there was a bat flying around yeah, while we, Bob we was doing a, his news. We talk a lot about the squirrels dropping out of the ceiling, and that's <laughs> true, but there was one morning when a, a bat dropped out of the ceiling while I'm doing a newscast, and of course I left the newsroom immediately Immediately, there's this bat flying around. I, I don't even know who got that. Maybe Kevin got the bat. I'm not sure, but uh, we had a lot of critters at 39, 3905 Spruce. So the, not to be Debbie Downer, which I always am, but so that was the Persian Gulf crisis. Which prior to, yeah. Prior to the war, Desert Storm, yeah, right? That was in 19... But then, Bob, you and I lived through 9-11. We certainly did. We were yeah. on the air, and uh, first Helen called us up and said that some plane had hit the uh, World Trade Center. Yeah, and we assumed it was um, a we small private plane. We thought it was a plane. small the private plane and an accident. And then you had just done your last newscast when we found out that there was a second hit. Yeah, a time that I'll never forget and none of us will forget oh, for goodness, sure. But being on the air during, during that and trying to... You know, give the update of the day and what was happening. It was and uh, make sense memorable. of it. Yeah. yeah, and actually, I felt very grateful that I had to come into work and be sort of stoic, so that I, I didn't just get completely taken over by fear. And I also remember that's when we finally got a TV in the studio. That's right. <laughs> we never had a TV in the studio. Prior to that, so there you go. All right. So uh, we're gonna head uh, into some more music right after this on XPN. Temple University supports XPN and offers prospective students an opportunity to learn about its 17 schools and colleges and more than 400 academic programs, which are designed to empower individuals to make a difference, not only in the region, but also around the world. Information on alumni support and all programs at temple.edu and at the 2015 Exponential Music Festival on July 24th through the 26th. 